champion. We are in Miami and it is our Sunday show, which means the stars are out. We are going to have Davi Martinez, his Bantamweight Championship won't be on the line, but he'll bring it with him and he's going to try to prove that he's still the best at 135 pounds. La Jaula, where all the action will occur. We'll get our prelims starting here momentarily. And we will have the action here with the prelims, some intriguing ones where we've seen some guys that are trying to get over the top. It's about making some noise. It's about seizing the opportunity. Not all the fighters do, but those that do come back as we head to the second half of 2022. This is the main card. Davi Martinez, the Bantamweight champion, will not be defending that as Arturo Vergara took the fight late as an injury replacement to Franz Milambo. We don't know a lot about him. We do know he is a kickboxing monster with an incredible career, and you can have to be a good striker. You catch a guy at the right moment. Anything is possible. Jay Duran, Marina Pichel, Chris Boasso, Dino Guilarans. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman with you. Great pre-fight show, great news that we were able to share here as well with Gabriel Soto joining us. But now it's Mauricio Cubillo, Justin Vasquez, Slick J. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Mauricio Cubillo. Cubillo is a tico, and he is very proud to have that Costa Rican flag around his shoulders. We have seen some good Costa Ricans fight. This guy, 34 years of age, won 10 of his 14 fights, has not fought since 2019, but you look at his record, he has fought and he has beaten some very good opponents. And to his defense, the reason why he has not fought because of since 2019 pandemic being one of the Which reasons shuts why. shuts down in Costa Rica. Correct. So this is now his chance. I mean, think about it. I took a time off two years. This was an opportunity to sharpen up his skills and what good opportunity to show what he learned inside La Jaula here tonight. First time he fights in the United States on such a global stage. I, if I was him, I'm feeling a lot of nerves here. This is a big few weeks for Costa Rican sports. You have uh, the national team in soccer trying to qualify for the World Cup. Su oponente, Justin Vasquez. The man they call Slick J fighting out of Miami, training out of Freedom Fighters. Coaches Manuel Lopez and Ray Fundora, we know pretty well here. Very good on the amateur ranks. We've seen him here in combate back in October, victorious over Gego Kelly. When you look at the people right behind Slick J here, Manolo, the guy who's trained the likes of Yoel Romero, Alex Caceres, this guy that you're looking on the screen right now is a game fighter, improves every time that he shows up inside La Jaula, great on the jiu-jitsu. And if you took a look at an Instagram page recently, this guy's Stand-up has just been very crisp and getting better and better by the day. And his submissions, as you pointed out, are elite. He has seven victories, seven two overall, four have come via submission. Both fighters in their 30s, although Justin Bass is just getting started in that category. He has a five-inch height advantage, five-inch via the reach. So Mauricio Coelho is going to have to find a way to close the gap. Both made weight. We're at 145 feather weight. Let's get it started the best way we know how. To Lupe Contreras. Este duelo, tres vueltas división peso pluma this bout three rounds in the featherweight division. Los jueces son the judges are Lorenzo Toledo, Eliseo Rodriguez y John Rupert. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 142 libras y media, his official weight, 142 and one half pounds. Entra a la jaula en su décimo sexto combate a nivel profesional, con 10 victorias y 5 derrotas. He enters la jaula for the 16th time as a pro, with 10 victories against 5 losses. Representando a San Jose, Costa Rica. Mauricio Pupi Cubillo. 
Su oponente en la esquina roja, vestido de negro, his opponent in the red corner, wearing black, detuvo la báscula un peso oficial de 144 libras y tres cuartos. He tipped the scales at an official 144 and three quarter pounds. Entra por décima ocasión a la jaula, con siete victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the 10 time as a pro, with seven victories against two losses. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, Justin Slick J. Baskets. El referee, Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers and his world class in, mutton chops. Bring it in, bring it in. You've already been given the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. If not, listen to me at all times, protect yourself at all times, do everything you can within the rules to win. Most importantly, best of luck, God bless. Touch them up if you want, wait for the belt. I complimented Josh <laughs> on those chops <laughs> at the uh, That's hard to grow, fight man. hotel. Judges, they are. Judges ready? Judges ready? 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 Begin. Mauricio Cubillo in red. Fighting Justin Slick J. Vasquez. This is a great fight to start off yeah, our right. night because these are guys that win a lot more than they lose. Yeah, Cubillo is a very good stand-up fighter. Does have that experience in jiu-jitsu as well. But as mentioned earlier, Vasquez, who trades with the Ray Fundoras, extraordinaire in the ground game in jiu-jitsu. That's the reason why he credits that amazing groundwork. Now right from the start, look at Cubillos. He's a very flashy fighter. He can hit you with flying knees, elbows. Justin, more patient, more calm. Let's see what he brings here today. And, and very important to know, Max, that Cubillos does have a victory over Jose Alde who's been here in Combate Global previously in the past. And we talk about David Martinez, the Bantamweight champ. Yeah. Jose Alde, Alde was the original Bantamweight champ in uh, Combate, and Cubillo's got a victory over him. And, and Kubi, I, I had an opportunity to speak to him prior. He, he took this fight a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of days actually, and he was very excited. He said, look, opportunity called me. I think we talk about this all the time, just like Eminem. Opportunity called me. I took this shot. <laughs> Took the shot. We can't even get the lyrics right. <laughs> I, I can remember the lyrics, all right? It's too much music to listen to. Cubillo is locking in there, just trying to prevent that size reach advantage that Slick J has. Cubillo, nicknamed Poopy, said it's a nickname he got from school. He doesn't remember how he got it, but I've had it for a long time. It's me. And Cubillo is an ambassador for a nonprofit organization called Dejando Huellas which is leaving pretty much leaving footprints. And, and that's what he wants to do. He said, listen, I want to go out there in the States in Combate Global in a jaula, represent Costa Rica, and be a role model to children. If he gets that victory right here today, a lot of kids are going to be smiling. And he wants this fight on the ground. He has 10 victories yep. in his 10 and 4 career, nine victories via submission. You heard me correct, nine. We talked about Vasquez being good with submission, but Vasquez is aware that he's dealing with an extraordinaire that will if not every fight, finish it via the sub, and he will wait. Cubillo will be able to take his feet, probably not. And in his previous fights, Cubillo does like to take this to the floor. He'll call out the fighter. But the fighter, you know, especially here in Combate Global, we love the stand-up game. Justin got the memo. He wants to keep it on the feet. He has this huge height and reach advantage. You've got to play adva oh. to your advantage, and I'm sure his corner has told him that as he dumps Cubillo. Doesn't want any part of going down. Maybe he does. Thought about it this time. Uh, Justin, Justin knows that he was having the upper hand on the stand-up game. He wants to maintain it there. He tried to go for an ass kick. It would have pretty much, if it would have connected right to the bit of the gut section there, would have taken out the air. Started MMA the summer going to his freshman year of high school. Speaking of Vasquez, his father uh, brought him to the police academy's MMA instructor school. There he went. Boxed, trained kickboxing along with grappling. And obviously having dad in the police force, there are those opportunities where you can test your combat skills. Vasquez just calculating when to strike and when to go to the ground game. He's just looking like a shark smelling blood. Such an odd exchange here because Cubillo is letting himself be a target. He wants to be a target. He wants to draw in Vasquez, who's very careful here. Watch out for up kicks from Cubillos. He may land some here if the opportunity opens. Justin's going to go to the center. 
Josh Rutgers will pick him up. Oh, and then he explodes out of that restart. That's five under oh, energy kick. Spinning back kick. They engage here at Cubillo Pupi, who has had nine submission victories. He has won via toe hold. He's won via triangle choke, guillotine, anaconda. That's how he beat Jose Aldai. Rear naked choke, Kimura, arm bar. So it's not like he goes to one submission. He'll find anything that works. Another one that misses over the top. Justin now they engage. Is, Justin is very confident. That's why he's landing in those flashiness with the elbows and the knees, just looking for an opportunity to put this one very out quickly. Good body blows there by Cubillo as he shows some of the stand up. Ooh, Lovely kick, kick and the spinning back fist. Great Cubillo. striking. Vasquez now starting to really unload. Yeah, Cubillo needs to back away. He needs to move around a little bit, cut the corners. Justin keeps coming at him right straight to him. 10 seconds to go in uh, an eventful first round. Thought about that spinning back kick, but has a very a more traditional kick as we get to the end of round one. Woo. Mauricio Cubillo uh, on the, uh, sh got the short end of the stick there as he's trying to feel out, trying to close the gap on the much bigger and the better striker fighting in Justin Vasquez. Cabillo wanted to take this fight to the ground. Justin didn't want to have it. Let's see here we hear a little bit of the corner. All right, it says you're waiting for him. You're doing well, but you're waiting. And here's the replay, Max, as we take a look. Right from the start, Justin feeling very confident, attempted a flying knee, a switch flying knee, then landing in some elbows. Taking it to the floor. Let's see what's at stake in the second episode of this bout. Justin Vasquez, the upper hand in that first round. We do have open scoring. We'll show you the scores. This is our opening fight of the evening. Been a big topic in the world of mixed martial arts about open scoring, but Combate Global has been doing it. And we don't know how it's been. Uh rolled out in the sense that are the corners telling their fighters? Are they telling them all the time? Or do the fighters want to know how much information? Sometimes you don't want all that information as Cubillo goes down again. Once again, he wants to take, but Justin's not having any of this. And if he is, what's going to happen is once that opportunity, that gap, Justin is going to slide right in there. Justin finding out of Miami, but repping Puerto Rico. So you have Costa Rica, Puerto Rico. Don't feel good, but Cubillo's doing it. He's, he's urging he's him on. He goes, come yeah, on. He's calling him in. Come just a little closer. Him. He's going to try to grab that leg and go to the ground, if potentially. But just, Justin, Justin wants to fight. He wants to take this on the, to the feet. And there's the open scoring, Max. Slick J winning that first round on all the judges' scorecards. Hard to imagine these two in the same weight class because Vasquez is so much longer. Thank you. And especially when you see Cubillo closing in, almost turtling up a bit, almost looks half the size. Well, at this point, could be a stand, go for takedowns. I mean, that's, that's the way you're going to get him. It's obviously Justin does not want to go to the ground. And, and if it is, it's not going to be this way. So much respect, and he allows him to get up. But Cubillo, seemingly that's his best bet. He's going to have to strike. Oh. Kick to the head. That one rocked him. There you go, one, two. Combination from Cubillo. Oh, uppercut. Got something out of Cubillo as well. Second round here. Vasquez looking for his sixth win in seven, which would really push him up. The rankings at 145. And Cubillo postures himself towards La Jaula. I don't know if he was trying to use it to kind of bounce off of it. Second time we've seen Cubillo do this. Just hang on like a coat. Not much action here from Cubillo's. Won't be surprised if he goes for a standing triangle choke. We just actually saw that not too long ago in one of the previous pay-per-views. Taking all the coaching right now is Vasquez. And there it and there, Ray Fandora mentioned it to him. Don't hold it. Don't hold the 
fence. Don't hold the fence. Peppering the ribs, too. A little warning there from Josh Rutgers about holding the fence. Now he's dropped. Yeah, there. He's just trying to yeah. hold on to him, yeah. but he just can't get him close enough. And that's smart from Vasquez. He's, uh, he's yeah. keeping that distance because he knows this guy he is a submission right. supremo. And, and, and Justin can deliver on the ground as well. He has the resume to prove it. But he wants to fight. He wants to stand up fight. Yeah, you see the, the corner of Cubillo saying, go for the knees. <laughs> see what he did? He was in like a breakdancing move there for a bit. These take a toll off. It's those kicks right underneath the gluteus maximus, tenderizing. On the quads. Look, look at the left thigh of Cubillo. Stop, stop, stop. Let him up. Let him up. Now they're saying box. Yeah. Could be his corner, telling him to box him. Change his stances. Straight away at flying knee. Slick J. Vasquez. Training since he's 14. Spinning with that hit, it could have been trouble. But perhaps a guillotine is maybe to try and go to the back. Now we're going to the floor. Let's see if Cabillo's, Cabillo, this is his shot, right? We're on the floor. This is what he wanted, obviously not in this position. Look at those shots right to the head. Smart from Vasquez. He, he says, if I'm going to go to the floor, I'm going to do it under my terms. And this is something that he can work with. I think his blood on the side, I believe. The back of the head. Yeah. There it is. Now, I, and that is to the back to the of the head, Max. Could that be a, a yeah. problem for Vasquez? Is that a legal blow? Well, if the referee didn't see it, he didn't say anything. But but Cubillos is pointing to it. Yeah, and there's a I lot mean, of blood. Only one way you're gonna bleed there, and that's to get hit in that area. And you're With not an supposed elbow. to get, Yeah, you're not supposed to hit in the back of the head. Well, this will be interesting as we get 30 seconds to go in round number two. Stop. See, there's a car, some sort of conversation here. That is literally at the top of the head. Oh, oh, straight route one kick Vasquez, but maybe Cubillo can grab that leg. Uh, oh, another again. just He's laid him out, telegraphed him in. Just like a full lot of parking lot, not letting him in. Cubillo's trying to get, he sees the blood on his head as he draws it off his hand. He will reach a round three. Leo looks groggy, and we hope it's uh, not from that blow to the head, which uh, obviously yeah. left a big mark. We'll see here uh, with the replay where that shot then opened him up in the back. All right, Manolo just told Justin the only thing left here, he wants to go to the ground. That's the only thing he wants to do. From my vantage point, didn't see it when I happened. Had an idea, got around there. I mean, it's as plain as day. I don't think he did intentionally. Yeah. Okay. Referee giving him that pep talk. He didn't catch he it. He didn't see it, but he can, he's yeah. looked at the damage. Well, it's right there. It's, it's, it's right there in the back of the head. Of course, it wasn't done intentionally. Yeah. And uh, just to update everybody here as we were between rounds, because our international audience is joining us now, Josh Rutgers going into the corner of Justin Vasquez saying, I didn't see it, but clearly you elbowed him in the back of the head. I, I can't deduct anything from here because I didn't see it at the time, but there's evidence there. You've got to be careful. And it happens, especially in their position. If you're hammering away, you want to put your opponent out as quickly as possible, and you just start landing a flurry of punches and elbows. Mistakes do happen. Good uh, directional kicking there from Vasquez. Yeah, he's been trying to land that kick over and over again to potentially catch Cubillo. Really Waiting amazing. for the highlight reel. Those kicks, side kicks, yep. head kicks, question mark kicks. Beautiful. Almost there. Beautiful. Just balance and dexterity for, for days. Switching stances as well, Max. It's been a great fight, Vasquez, but he has to be careful because Cubillo in an instant can turn this thing on its head. Yeah, Justin's corner even told him <laughs> he just wants the floor. That's all you want. Oh, now Justin is just a 10 8 round there. Yeah. Ooh. He keeps catching him coming in, and that's what Kobe wanted. There Waited we go. for the mistake. He over. Oh, oh Kobe tired. Happened. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that should 
That should have been right from the start. Go for the takedown. Don't go to your back and wait for him. Justin is not going to play with you. He doesn't want to take, take that fight to the floor that way. Let it evolve. Vasquez, really an amazing story. There was a time he was homeless. He lived out of his car that his brother <laughs> gave him. He's literally punching his feet. <laughs> now that says, we, we, will, we shall not allow that. <laughs> Vasquez was making $80 a week as a wrestling instructor. He took a lot of pride in that. Uh, would park his car outside the gym, and that's that was home. In a way, Max, did, if I was Justin, I, I would be a little frustrated. I want to fight. I, you're not following me here. <laughs> you know, let's take it to the feet. Let's take it to the to the top, the center of La Jaula. That's why Manolo, Justin's coach, trainer, told him that he wants to go to the floor. That's the only way in. Back-to-back -back submission victories for Vasquez, but he's not going to go down that route here just because of the opponent. Trying to keep this on his feet and doing just fine. According to one Woo! judge, a 10-8 round there in the second. Spinning reverse kick right to the sternum of Gubio. And That can knock your air out and take it down to the floor. Trust me, I've been hit with one of those. Look, this has been really well vetted by Vasquez, not going into the deep end of the submission pool here with Cuillo. He'll get nine of his 10 victories via submission, and he's beaten some good fighters. Cuillo's corner telling him to keep kicking up kicks to catch Justin. And, and Vasquez's corners warn him about the possible up kick. Not to control the legs. Two for one. Kubio is calling him in. Just, Justin just doesn't want any. Vasquez doesn't want it. Vasquez reaching down like he's grabbing a snake that's escaped. It's right, he's, he's trying to control man. the legs so he can get that shot to go to the ground. Kubio goes to this well one more time. Maybe it pays off. He puts all his weight down on Vasquez. Third round, it's hard to stay on there with uh, the sweat. Oh. Quickly disposed of of Slick J. That's the second time that Josh Rutgers mentions to Kubia to not hold the fence. Makes the all red underneath that left leg. One minute, 13 to go here in the final round. And this is shaping up to be a, a clean sweep of the rounds for Vasquez. Rubio just hoping to get an up kick that will knock out Vasquez. More kicking, using both legs. There's the up kick. All right, Justin's corner just go for the Hail Mary. One thing is opening that gap and landing in a shot right to the face. Now back, this there is it go. for Rubio. Didn't get caught that time, so some progress. Perhaps guillotine attempt gets underneath the arms of Cubillo. Now we go to the floor. Justin more than likely will spin around. 30 seconds. Trying to find that shot. Shot to the shoulders of the area, to the rib area. Trying to spin around here, but Cubillo holding on to that left. Mamo Pupi. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, just getting started here on our special Sunday Combate Global. You have a submission right here, Max. If he turns around real carefully, he can hold it on very tight. No need for urgency as Vasquez has this fight won and will make it six wins out of seven. And he uh, puts a stamp on it. Port stuff as Slick J Vasquez. Knew we would have a tough bout, made it look easy. In the end, we'll be back and have much more from La Jaula. Real connection there between uh, his coaches. He made it look easy. He did, that was impressive. And it was, a, it was an unorthodox sort of setup, knowing that he had some submission game, but he couldn't go too deep into those waters with a man who knows submissions and all kinds of submissions very, very well. Let's take a look here at the replay right from the start. Justin going with the kicks, but Cubillo's call to the challenge with his boxing, throwing in some lefts and rights. But Cubillo's call to take this fight to the ground 
didn't happen. But we have to give credit to Mauricio. He took this fight on day's notice. Good way of stepping up. Triumphant start to the card for Justin Slick J. Vasquez. Tolupe. Toledo. Entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 27 after three rounds. Judges Toledo and Rupert turned in identical scores of 30 to 27. Y el juez Rodriguez anotó 30 a 26. Judge Rodriguez scores it 30 to 26. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Slick J. Justin Vasquez. Oh, Manuel Lopez. The folks at Freedom Fighters feel they have a real good fighter here as Slick J. Vasquez improves to eight and two. He hadn't fought in seven months. I am sure we'll see him a lot sooner the next time around as he looks to get some traction in the featherweight division. As we take a look, Justin coming in right from the start. Trying to with some flashiness right from the get-go. Cubillos missed that. Was able to counter that or defend himself from that flying knee. Justin attempting some highlight, potential highlight reel with the flashiness of his knees and the kicks. Cubillos wanted to take this fight to the ground. Justin just wasn't having any of it as he wanted to continue this fight to dictate where it would go, and that was on the feet. Towards the end of the fight, here you can see that there wasn't clearly an, a shot to the back of the head, which opened him up. In between that transition of rounds, the referee mentioned to Justin, hey, I saw what you did, it's clearly there, but we'll let it slide. And Justin, it was all his fight. Good way, good victory, good stuff coming out from Slick J. The elbow could have changed the path, but he stayed on track and gets the victory. I'm Jay German, I'm 21 years old, and I am from Bordeaux, France. I first started with kickboxing when I was nine. Then three years later, I did the national championship in kickboxing and I won. At the age of 19, I wanted to start something new, so I started MMA and now I'm here. My name is Marina Pichel. Vengo de Barcelona, España, y tengo 22 años. Yo practicaba fútbol y hace un par de años practico artes MMA. My fighting style is more like striking because I come from kickboxing background. But now, months after months, I'm becoming an MMA fighter. Soy una luchadora completa, pero sobre todo me gusta mucho el striking. Me gusta pelear de todas las formas y, y me amoldo a todo lo que lo que pase. My first fight in Combate Global was against Gloria Bravo. After this fight, I learned that even the little mistakes can make you lose. Lo que hace destacar a los peleadores de España es el coraje y la fuerza que tienen. Mi oponente es Jay Jordan. Bueno, venía del, del kickboxing. Lo que espero de este combate es dar un buen espectáculo. I'm very happy to represent France in Combate Global because there is not a lot of French fighters here. Marina, I train very hard, so be ready. One fight under wraps here. Victory for Justin Slick J. Varquez. Vasquez, pardon me. Now we're gonna move down to the Bantamweight division. Two fighters we have seen with some frequency here in Combate Global. It is Pierre Daguzan, the French Hawaiian. Alan Bench. Ten in the Bantamweight rankings. Lupe Contreras is ready, so let's hand it over. Entrando a la jaula, Pierre Daguson. He can pronounce anything. Yeah, Lupe. He yeah, can pronounce. Yeah, you, you don't try and test him; he'll answer the bell. 
every time. This is a man with a very interesting story. In 2009, he went to China for a university exchange program. He was a rugby player at the time. Uh, then he started to train martial arts. Kickboxing was next. And then a year later, he was in an MMA fight. Uh, his wife, he moved to Hawaii six years ago. His wife is from there. They actually met in China. Uh, quite the love story now together. Cool story. The Hawaiian, cool, the French Hawaiian. Cool story and a very smart guy. We'll go ahead and talk to him. It's what he does at the side, but trains with the likes of the Max, the Holloways. We actually saw him the last time around in Yancy Copa Yancy Madero is another great Hawaiian right. fighter. As we go ahead and introduce his opponent. Su contrario, Alan Cantu. One of my favorite nicknames, bet you. Who uh, we have seen frequently. He has been a regular in Combate Global. Last time was December 2021. He was a uh, was an alternate, and he lost to uh, Ricky Bandejas in that Copa Combate alternate bout. Great fun fighter to watch. Very fast paced, veloc. Trained with the likes of the Ultimate Combat Fighter and the MMA Lab. MMA Lab is the home of the Benson Hendersons. So there's some top-notch guys there. When he's not training in Mexico, he comes here to the States to sharpen up his tools. This one for the books, folks, this should be a very fun one because both these guys love to strike, exchange with the kicks and with the hands. I don't know, Max, but this five-hour energy is kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Need a sponsorship. <laughs> head to head, Alan Cantu, 16 fights at the tender age of 28. Uh, he is one inch the shorter to Daguzan who has a six inch reach advantage. Those long arms certainly will play a role here. Both fighters making weight here at 135. To Lupe. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división peso gallo. We continue with much more action. Three rounds in the Bantamweight division. Los jueces on the judges are Vicente Rodriguez, Lorenzo Toledo, y Eliseo Rodriguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, Llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing white. Marcó un peso oficial de 135 libras y media on the scales. He registered an official 135 and one half pounds. En 12 combates, mantiene un record de 6 victorias y 6 derrotas. In 12 bouts as a professional, he has a record of 6 victories against 6 losses. Uriondu, de Versailles, Francia. And fighting out of Honolulu, Hawaii. The French Hawaiian, Pierre. Daguson. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de negro con verde y rojo. His opponent in the red corner, wearing black with green and red. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y media. His official weight, 135 and one half pounds. En 17 combates a nivel profesional, mantiene un record de 9 victorias y 8 derrotas. In 17 bouts as a pro, he maintains a record of 9 victories against 8 losses. De Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. Alan Beche Canto. El referee, Raúl Porrata. Raúl Porata, El Bigote. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. So they come to orders and protect them at all moments. So if you want this now, if you want it. Trying to undermine the broadcast. Back to your corner. It's funny, The Bigote, man. <laughs> the all Bigote. Right. We love... uh, I've learned a lot from Raúl. We, we get to chat a little bit at the hotel about what is uh, the changing landscape of MMA rules as we're underway. It is Daguzan in white. And last we saw Alan Cantu, December he lost to Ricky Pandeas. He's fought some really good fighters. He's fought Joey Ruquet. He fought David Martinez right. in that tournament. He yep. lost him right before he beat Ernesto Ibarra, who we saw last week, and he looked phenomenal. Yeah, and he, and he, he always brings it. Very stand-up fighter. Has over 16 fights. This is the game, game fighter here we're seeing inside La Jaula. But Pierre, fair share of experience as well. Trains with the likes, as I mentioned earlier, with Max Holloway, Yanti Madedos, Tyson Nam, the folks up at Gracie Tech Technics, Purple Belt of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's a durable, rough fighter, will take punches and give you three right in return. He's not going to stand back if you go ahead and go toe to toe. And we should be expecting here a fight between two 
game fighters that love to exchange. Good foot movement as well from both these guys. Fast pace. It's just going to pick up from here on on, guys. Oh, oh big oh, left hand Lord from Gantu. And Ooh. now Daguzan is in problems. You heard it. All of these are connecting. Daguzan is groggy. Another straight left. Piercy Tweety Bird right now, Max. Woo. Benche Gantu, he is all about MMA. He does oh. enjoy motorcycles as too, but he owns a gym. A full-on striker. Daguzan is feeling that right now. Oh, yeah. Daguzan needs to set his... Oh, oh another oh. left hand! Raul Borata's going to stop it. it. Oh. The left he hand was, was dynamite for Benche Gantu. First round TKO. Ooh. He was already dazed when he took out the first time. He was trying to compose himself. It just wasn't going to happen. And Allen just smelled when to strike again and put this one in the book. What a phenomenal victory for Allen Cantu. Holy Lord. Emotionally overcome, and can you blame him? He's had such an up and down career. Woo. He fights really good fighters. He yeah. beats good yeah. fighters. Then he has a letdown. He's got to be consistent. Got to be consistent, yeah. Th th maybe this is it. Maybe he is finding that consistency. We'll find out the next time we see him. Phenomenal job from Alan Cantu. What a beautiful, beautiful hand to knock this man out. Campbell, the Hef is in there. You know he liked this one. Here we go, right from the start, they were testing each other around. Look at that, it was that left that took him down and put this one in the books. Pierre tried to exchange, it was that left hook that took down the Frenchman to the canvas of La Haula. Finishing this bout very quickly. What a great victory for Alan Cantu. He is going to enjoy the rest of this Sunday. It's etched on his face. That straight left hand causing problems. We'll get the official decision next. You can tell who won and who lost. It's clear as day. The eyes of Beche Cantu wide open. He has gone through hell and high water in his MMA career. And look what he did. That was a cross. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, just from the left, with that power, all hip movement. I mean, he came in, once he took that left, it was all hip, that strength from it. They came in with full power that brought Pierre straight to the floor. And the first time around that he connected, Pierre was already wobbly. He was already sleepy, to say the least. He was just trying to gain composure, but it just wasn't enough time on Takata Kata. Benche Cantu sending a message, and quickly. We have a big time fight in the Bantamweight later, but how about this one as we go to Lupe? El tiempo oficial, un minuto. 49 seconds del primer episodio of the official time. One minute, 49 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico, Alan Beche Cantu. Beche Cantu takes over a huge victory, his fifth TKO win, as he improves to 10 and 8. Campbell's inside the howler. That only means good things. Approval. Felicidades, Beche. Much more fights coming your way. Beche got to the victor, the spoils. Quick work. I mean, the, the first the left hand, the cross, and then he set it up again, and yeah. he caught him on the button. It was all pure hip all that power that comes from it. And sometimes when you're moving around so much and you're standing the game and you're striking, you tend not to position your left foot. But this man, when he came in with the left, 
It's like he prepped it up, he loaded it up, and bam! Struck Pierre, took him right to the floor, came with full force, harder than a Category 5 Hurricane. Woo! What a great knockout. We'll have much more fights. We'll continue our preliminary action. We'll have the flyweights in the women's Jacqueline McLean and Bianca Medina next. Jacqueline McLean representing Alberta, Canada. Blanca Medina from Sevilla, España. Both just getting started. For Medina, it is her professional debut. She's going to be inside the Haula. A lot of big time accolades surrounding her, but what will she do in the big picture now? Entrando a la Haula. Jacqueline McLean. Jacqueline McLean with uh, the maple leaf on her back. Uh, she's from a fighting family. It's in her bloodline. Grandfather was a boxer. Uh, she's Canadian. She played hockey. She also played soccer, which is obviously a growing sport there in uh, Canada. Training out of the little sweatshop in Sherwood Park. We haven't had a lot of Canadian fighters, let alone from Alberta. But there's been a ton of famous, well-known Canadians, just as George St. Pierre and so many others. But this young lady, uh, a practitioner, a student, a teacher of yoga, had an, a chance to talk to her very sweet young lady, very focused, very educated. And she is here to deliver. It's in her bloodline, fighting, it's in her blood. And she's here to prove it inside La Hala. In Combate Global, big chance for her to shine inside. Going up against another opponent, Blanca Medina, all the way from Spain. Should be a very fun one Sorry, to see these ladies. Blanca Medina. The thing that we see about Spanish fighters, when we first started here on Combate Global, they came from the Canary Islands. Yeah. Then we saw some from Madrid, but now it's the width and breadth. We got Barcelona fighters, and now we have Medina from Sevilla. And, uh, she got connected with one of the big names in Spanish MMA, Enrique Wasabi Marin. And you could see that MMA is just expanding, as you said, Max in Spain. I mentioned earlier, Claudia Diaz, she had to leave Spain at the time so she can work on her stand-up game or her overall mixed martial arts skills. She came back for some time and then left again. But all these fighters that left come back and teach the other fighters in Spain what MMA is all about, and they can perfect their skills as we take a look at the head-to-head, -head, Max. Just getting started, Medina at 23 years of age is in the flyweight category. Uh, Medina made weight with seven pounds to spare. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división, peso, mosca. We continue with much more action. Three rounds in the flyweight division. Los jueces son the judges are Eliseo Rodriguez, John Rupert, y Vicente Rodriguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing white. Le tuvo la báscula, un peso oficial de 125 libras y tres cuartos. She tipped the scales at an official 125 and three quarter pounds. Su record profesional, una victoria y una derrota. Her professional record, one victory against one defeat. Fighting out of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, Canada. Jacqueline, full tilt, McLean. En la esquina roja. Vestida de negro in the red corner, wearing black, su peso oficial, 118 libras y media. Her official weight, 118 and one half pounds. Esta noche, debuta a nivel profesional dentro de la jaula de combate global. Tonight, inside of la jaula, she is making her professional debut. De Sevilla, España, Blanca, Wiri Medina. El referee, Raúl Porrata. Witty Medina, Raúl Porrata, the third inside, the jaula. Yeah, look from the start. Medina with her stand-up game. Jacqueline with her boxing. Lista. 
Action! Styles makes vice to see if it goes to the ground. Though, Max, that could be a different story to tell. McLean, nicknamed Full Tilt Medina, 4-0 in her amateur record. High, high praise from her coach. High, high praise from everyone involved. Michael Framowitz, who looks like this is a fighter who can come in here and make some headway. Just 22 years of age, though, so just getting started. McLean's been there and done that. And right from the start, attempting a takedown. Didn't go that way. She wanted to pressure Medina from the start. Don't grab the fence. Referee giving a warning not to grab the fence. Medina just leveraging Don't underneath. Don't grab the fence. Another That's warning from Raul Porata. A second warning. Very crucial. That's McLean who's grabbing the fence. Yep. Just wedges in there. Good head position from McLean. Side knee. Should lend a knee opportunity here for her. Medina should use those elbows to get away and take this fight to the center of La Jaula. Get away from the fence area, which really impedes her from moving. And now she's taken to the floor, Max. Excellent here from McLean. Starting to get up, clearing the guard, gets the back, puts some hooks in underneath. This could finish early, Max. The Canadian feels very confident in this Pulled position. Out. Look, she has the arm. Another, she grabbed the fence, though. She grabbed, that's the third warning. You heard Raul Porata say that's your second warning, so that would be the third. Porata's being very courteous. That's the third warning. More shots here. Very Clay's dangerous dominate. position. Can't grab the fence. Buckles in. Drops the hips. Perhaps a rear naked coming. Oh, there was an arm as well available if she were to grab onto the arm in transition. She has like a half Nelson. Yeah, she's got really putting a, a stretch oh, on. Vicious. Medina's See, in major trouble here. From this position, she was landing some elbows to the side of the face. Very uncomfortable position. She won't let this full mount though. Staying active on the ground. Peppering away. McLean is really dominating from pillar to post in these first two minutes and 30 seconds of opening round. Medina sustaining just vicious blows from the Canadian from elbows to hammer fist to shots. Tremora attempt. Yep, she's trying to get that arm around. Medina responds well. You get that point of view shot. Up and close. Professional debut for Medina. Did fight in February, an MMA fight, which she won via KO. Stop! A stoppage here. Stop, party. Party. Get up. A lot of time to Get break up. them up. Pull it into a corner. One point taking off. a point away from McLean. Grabbing the fence. Grabbing the fence. And he warned her three times. I didn't off. see it that time. Yeah, I, I but didn't see it. It was, it was a... You cannot grab the fence. See it there, I warned you three times. Okay. He did one or three days. Do it again. I don't want to disqualify you. Are you clear with that? Another grab Stay of the right fence. Stay right there. And it would be a disqualification, according to Raul Porata. He's just saying, I okay. took a point away because you grabbed the fence. What a relief for Medina. She gets a reset here. Are you clear? Don't grab the fence. Lista? Ready? Don't grab the fence. Oh, good forearm by McLean. Just great bobbing and weaving from the Canadian. The Spaniard needs to use those kicks to keep the Canadian away. Oh, she tendered up. Oh, oh she tendered up Medina. Nice and now she put her down with that left hand. Can't grab the fence, though. She is on the threshold here. She's dominating the fight. Just cannot grab the fence. The temptation might be there. She can hook those legs right. Uh-oh, Medina in major trouble. Hammer fist coming, firing down. Oh, Canada. McLean full mount. The end must be near. Elbows. Hammer fist. Huge damage. Warning for the not hit back of the head. McLean can't stay out of her own way. That's the problem. She might lose this fight despite dominating. She's in a Medina's in a critical position. She has the arm there, Max. The Canadian could have taken advantage of that, but she wants to put this one into wraps. Medina trying to get some coaching. Oh, that one missed. That was a haymaker. Less than a minute to go in this first round. McLean again. Those have got to be painful. Will the Spaniards survive one minute of this? 
Almost a submission attempt. Garvin oh, the arm bar. bar. It's got to be deep. Medina somehow withstanding. Medina needs to pull that arm as quickly as possible. Use that body to transition and get out. The arm is out. She does still in, but it it's out. not in an arm bar submission position. She's got to hold on. He didn't have it tight enough. It's coming from all directions for Medina. This is exhausting for her. Now a guillotine. What a turn this would be. 15 seconds to go. It could be a comeback from behind, Max. Oh, Medina just taking a beating in this first round, but she'll survive it. Man. Welcome to MMA for a Blanca Medina. Wow, what, it, 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 Medina seemed to have coming back. Let's take a listen to the corner. Respira, agua y tú bebes cuando puedas, pero baja un poquito la arteria. The water. Agarra la botella. Take deep breath. Take deep breath. Come on. Tranquilo. Another one. Another deep breath. Come on. Take deep breath. Tell him to drink some water. Let's take a look at the replay here. The Canadian seemed to have this fight in the bag, landing some shots, but in some way made it out into the second chapter of this bout. So Medina, what, Rodolfo, what she could do here? Nothing went right. Uh, and she doesn't look like she will be able to respond. She is, she's gone through a, a Medina, storm. Medina needs to use that teep, use the kicks, play the distance. Put it in the corner, not your fault. Something accidental here. Let's take a look here. Something happened at the corner. Not Told sure Told McLean, what. not your fault. Time in, fight! Was it the mouthpiece? I, I, I think it was the mouthpiece because I see her put her. I, I, no! Oh, that one, good right from Medina. Whoa! Much better. A change of scenery, a change wow. around, does a body good. Right from the get go with a one two combination, but now the takedown from the Canadian. Canadian hanging on. Trying to position Medina. Trying to attempt. Some shots, it's a very critical, it's a really odd position that she's in right now, since the fence is in the way. Now, McLean has the back of the Spaniard. Good oh, shots McLean. here. Yeah, Medina had a nice little flourish, but it's long since run its course. Now she has to go through survival mode yet again. If Medina was gonna put it, in the back, it would have been in the start of that second round when she landed that one-two combination and she had to follow up, but McLean just got the best of it by taking uh -oh, down the this, Spaniard. This might be the end here. Medina's got nowhere to go. And Raul Porata's going to stop it this time to end the fight. Just too much traffic coming. Medina just wasn't answering back. And McLean just kept working. Good call by the referee. Safety is first for the fighters. Medina, an unsuccessful pro debut. I'm sure we'll potentially see her here once again in La Aula. She has to go back in the gym, work on some of those skills, work on keeping your opponent away, not to really defend any takedowns. You know, that, that's what the, the, the holes were. This isn't really a great showing for Medina, but we've heard how good she is, but she has a lot to work on. And this, she's in diapers as it applies to MMA, but a learning experience for sure is uh, McLean now gets her second win in three fights. And, and that's what they say. If you have that strong base in the ground game, you could be very successful in mixed martial arts. It's obviously clear here, her bread and butter is a stand-up game. But you evolve as a mixed martial artist. You're, you're never going to get the top of the top in all areas, right? You always have a little deficiency in, in some areas. 
It's just a matter of working it Damas out. Damas una serie de golpes sin respuestas obliga al referee Raúl Porrata a parar la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 3 minutos 33 segundos del segundo capítulo. Ladies and gentlemen, a series of unanswered blows obligates referee Raúl Porrata to stop this contest with an official time of 3 minutes 33 seconds of round number 2. Your winner, by way of TKO, la ganadora por knockout técnico. Full tail, Jacqueline McLean. Representing Canada, Alberta, as well as Nova Scotia. Who works at, uh, McLean, who works full time as an instrumentation and controls technician for PCI Technologies. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds yeah, important. It sounds very smart. I'm glad she's out there. <laughs> Great opportunity to see the Canadian flag inside the Haula, and it is a victorious event as we start to put a bow on our preliminary card. Great performance by McLean, right from the start, taking her down her opponent. She attempted to put this fight right from the top to finish in the first round, but Medina lived onto the second round. She started off very clearly, potentially even finishing it, but she got taken down by McLean, as you can see there, with a shot and landed a flurry of punches, elbows. Clearly, Medina was not answering back. There were several opportunities here for submissions. In the first round, she attempted an arm bar, but Medina found a way to escape and transition. Obviously, there's some work to do there in her ground defense, but Raul Parata saw enough. Medina wasn't answering back. Safety first. The Canadian takes the win. That was impressive. Right from the opening bell, she emptied the chamber on Medina. Had a little setback, had the point deduction, but still was able to overcome. Perfect in striking. And that is why McLean in the flyweight division has something to look forward to. We are wrapping up our preliminary card. Don't go anywhere. Our main card, including a look at our Bantamweight champion, lies ahead. Combate Global here on Paramount Plus. Hace muchos años, nueve años, empecé con un grupo de amigos. Mi mente cambió cuando empecé a entrenar MMA y, y me dije, en verdad, yo creo que puedo hacer lo que yo quiera. Lo que hace que los peleadores de mi país se destaquen es que sabemos que venimos de abajo, entonces generalmente siempre son peleadores todo aguerridos y yo no he visto ningún chileno en verdad que, que en ningún espectáculo no dé una guerra. Más que representar a Chile como en sí, en verdad representa a toda esa gente que viene de los barrios bajos y demostrarle que en verdad que si tú quieres hacer algo, que puedes hacerlo. Lo que me caracteriza como peleador, en verdad, es esto. Tengo la capacidad de, de adaptarme a lo que sea. Estoy más que preparado, en verdad. Siempre he soñado así como, algún día van a llamar y tengo que estar listo, porque la vocación es perfecta, no existe. Que esté listo, en verdad, que viene su peor pesadilla en cambio. Interesting words there from Arturo Macaco Vergara, the, the, the unified approach from Chilean fighters, how they share an identity and how they bring it into the fight game. We don't know a lot about him. We know he's great at kickboxing, but he has a very stern test in front of him in David Martinez. But some of these unknown fighters before have come in and have surprised us here on Combate Global. He has nothing to lose and everything to gain, Max. I'm really curious to see what he's going to do and if he can back up everything that they've been saying on social media. Our main card is here. We've talked plenty about the main event. Arturo Vergara of Chile, David, the black Spartan Martinez, one of the true stars of Combate Global, so much so that he's got a strap around his waist, champion at 135. Jade Joran, a fighter that is getting all the attention, someone that they feel could be a huge star in the female division, she'll be fighting tonight at 110 pounds as she faces Marina Pichel. But coming up first, 
Chris Boasso, Dino Aguilarans. We're going to our main card for a worldwide audience. Don't go anywhere. It's Combate Global. We're in Miami, we have some Combate Global. We also have the Miami Heat looking to make the NBA Finals. I know you don't care about that, even though he's a Miami guy, Rodolfo Roman. Do. He's all about the Miami Marlins. What can I tell you? Well, that too. But we're not talking baseball. We're not talking basketball. We're talking Combate. Our beautiful studios, our beautiful jaula. There it is. You're walking in. That's what it looks like to fight. But that is holy ground. You've got to be able to compete. You've got to be able to throw. You've got to be able to submit or you'll go out the hard way. This was a card we were looking forward to for some time. David Martinez returning to the Jaula for the first time in the year. Supposed to be fighting Franz Malambo, the Copa Combate champion. Malambo picked up an injury, unable to go. Someone else steps up and this sport is at its best when a story unfolds that could change someone's life. It could happen here tonight for Arturo Vergara. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman. Now, this is what I love about this sport. You get disappointed with an injury, but opportunity knocks for somebody else. And I was notified that Franz from Lambo is keeping a close eye on this bout because he's still next in line to get a shot at that title. Martinez's belt is not on the line tonight, but Vergara has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Even if he loses this fight and gives competition to Martinez, you, then you have to think about it. Well, you have to give this guy a title opportunity. As for Martinez, if he were to lose, what does that mean to him? Even though his title is not... Entrando a la jaula, Chris Boasso. Chris Boasso is a real salt of the earth guy. He's got the United States flag, also representing the country of his, his family. His stepfather used to take him to train in jiu-jitsu in a garage with Joe Castiglione when he was a kid. And then he started to build. Training out of Sanford MMA, Wonderful in the amateur ranks. We have seen him here in uh, Combate Global as recently as November 2021, where he had the victory, but it slipped away. He made a little mistake. He got caught in a guillotine choke, and then he attempted to slam him. I had to make up for it. Su oponente, Dino Hilarans. Dino Hilarans had two fights in Combate. They didn't go his way. He, he stepped away and he was able to get two victories elsewhere, which he feels is gonna boost himself. He now feels he's ready for the big league challenge of Combate Global. Well, he comes in with the momentum. He has those two wins right in his pocket. Boasso, now he just came about the feet. He has much to prove to himself. So there's a lot at stake here. And Dino, he's hungry for that first victory in Combate Global. He is itching for that win and how sweet it would be to do it right here as we're in prime time in Spain right now. Saludos, España! Where we're, uh, as Campbell McLaren told me, Combate is knocking on the door of the UFC rankings over in Spain, which is a huge market. There's going to be huge Spanish superstars in MMA. We don't know if it's next week or if it's in two years, but it's going to happen. Perhaps it's a Tino Gilarans as we look at the head-to-head. -head. Boasso three inches taller, one inch via the reach. We are in the featherweight division. Back to you, Lupe. 
Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo, división peso pluma de Spout en la Featherweight Division, los jueces son, the judges are, John Rupert, Vicente Rodríguez y Lorenzo Toledo. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de negro, presenting the blue corner, wearing black. Su peso oficial, 145 libras y tres cuartos, his official weight, 145 and three quarter pounds. En su sexto combate a nivel profesional, con tres victorias y dos derrotas, y enters la jaula, for the sixth time as a professional, with three victories against two losses, de sangre cubana, and fighting out of Miami, Florida, Chris Buazo. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de color amarillo, his opponent in the red corner, wearing yellow, detuvo la báscula, a un peso oficial de 146 libras, he tipped the scales, at an official 146 pounds, igual que su rival, en cinco combates profesionales, mantiene un récord de tres victorias y dos derrotas, like his opponent, in five pro bouts, he maintains a record of three victories against two losses, de Madrid, España, Dino, no mercy, Hilaras. El referee, Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers, third inside the jaula. Bring it in, gentlemen. We already went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. Other than that, listen to me at all times, protect yourself at all times, do everything you can within the rules to win. Most importantly, best of luck, God bless. Most importantly, best of luck, God bless. Well said, Josh. Ready? Ready? Begin. There's nothing better in the attire for combate than those Spanish Woo! shorts in uh, the national colors of yellow and red, which is what Gilarance is wearing. He looks really confident, Rodolfo, and there's a good reason for that. After stepping away from combate, he won two fights in the calendar year 2021. Both first round TKOs. Coming out fresh, that momentum is there. Don't hook the toes in it. This fight is going straight to the ground the from the top, it. which is a little surprising because Tina does like the stand-up game and does Boasa, but Boasa feels very confident at the floor. This is a friendly reminder not to make any mistakes like he did down time when he got caught in a guillotine. I'm sure Boasa fixed those gaps. Boasa does have great boxing. Tino. Good boxing, stand-up, and wrestling. Tino uh, really is loyal to his camp. In fact, he sports a tattoo of his gym, of Dakota on his right collar. Watch the fingers the man in the eyes, top man. Watch the fingers Tino the eyes. exploding into this fight. The dominant first minute. He is 3-2, and, and we talked about the two losses in combate. He could easily be 5-0 oh, as Boasso is bloodied up. He's already and a, a submission open. attempt. Hilarantz is looking man. remarkable. Boasso's just looking for an arm. Oh, to lots get of blood. Something. But that cut is, I don't know if it's deep, but it's gushing blood. He's wow. leaking. Like wow, it's over. it's over. It's over. Tino Hilarantz, a third God. straight first round TKO. We saw, we saw it last time with Javier Reyes, a guy who struggled yes. and got better. It's happened again. Tino Hilarantz, incredible. Oh. Man, what a great win for the Spaniard. Phenomenal right from the start. Complete dominance. And I really anticipated a little exchange right from the top. This guy's winning momentum just carried on. Went to the floor, used his body to keep Boasso on the ground, pinned him, and just laid a flurry of punches and elbows and busted up Boasso. He wants to keep going. <laughs> I was going to say he could have been an undefeated fighter. His two losses in combate in May of 2019, it was a doctor stoppage, and then November 2018, a split decision versus Jair Lopez. And, and this is for Boasso. See, not the same exact thing, but he was taken down to the ground. In this case, it was not a submission. 
but it was the attack of flurries from the elbows and from the punches that he just couldn't get out. He was in a tough position. He was pinned right to the howler, which makes it very difficult. He was turtling himself up, wasn't really doing much. He was trapped. He was trapped, like a mouse in a mouse trap. And a good stoppage by Josh Rutgers, who tried to give Boasso to respond, but there's nowhere Boasso could go. And look at that wow. cut on his forehead. He looks like Dusty Rhodes in the 1980s oh, NWA. You're going way back. But there was no blading. Bionic elbows and all. That was elbows for days. Dino Gilarance, the, the look on his face says it all. Collecting our breath here as uh, Tino Gilarance, and for good reason, Campbell McLaren inside the Howla. We have seen a couple first round stoppages. Well, you know, I had, I had Boasso go in as a Chris, favorite here. Boasso yeah. has been really impressive. You yeah. said it, he was one mistake away from right. winning four straight fights. Right. One mistake, he one would be mistake. four straight wins. And right here, Tino, he's in that momentum and it carries on. Many people think that it, it doesn't play, it plays a huge role when you're in that winning streak. Dino Hilarans is thinking of something, I'm not sure, but he, he has to be feeling the work has paid off. He had some bumps along the road, but now he looks, we talked about maybe, a Spanish star will arriving. Maybe you're looking at him as he's caked in the blood of Chris Boasso. And just to repeat what, what Rodolfo said, Boasso was probably the favorite coming in. We'll get your thoughts on that, Rodolfo. But first, let's go inside the jaula to Lupe. Este combate llega a su conclusión con un tipo oficial de un minuto 26 segundos del primer episodio. This bout concludes with an official time of one minute 26 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el vencedor por knockout técnico de España. No mercy, Tino Gilara. 29-year-old has a, a son at home. That 4-2 record may be just the launching point for a real power player in this division of 145 pounds. He came in hype right from the get-go. He was even smacking his thighs, ready to go. It's perfect takedown from the Spaniard to Boasso. Boasso trying to position himself, trying to use La Hala to take it more to the center and get out, but that was not the case. As Tino got Boasso like a mouse in a mouse trap, pinning him, laying a flurry of punches and elbows, non-stop busting him open. It was worse than a scene from a horror movie. It was, it just, it, sitting there in a pool of his own blood. If it wasn't the elbows, there was a, almost a, a submission attempt in there. Yeah. Boasso had nowhere to go. Not he had to sit there and just absorb this. Great, phenomenal stuff, and it proves to you how much the Spaniards have improved in their overall game as fighters. Three straight first round TKOs for Dino Hilarans. Well, our Ghostbusters have a little bit more to clean up <laughs> after that fight. And we feel for Chris Boasso. Uh, I don't think he expected the fight to start that way and just be you know, under a siege. It's like a hitter on a slump, right? Sometimes you got to find some, some holes you got to fix. Well, again, it was not the same exact picture, but almost uh, the same result. One of them being a submission, the other one here, being stuck to the howler, pinned down, and just ground and pounded or punched away with elbows and flurries and really just stuck in a position where you could not get out, not positioning yourself very well. So he has to make some changes. La Haula has seen a lot already. And I mean, we, we always sit here and say, you don't want to miss this card, but it's good every fight we have. There's something to it. There's something magical about that arena 
where we see the very best, and it's the fighters coming in with such an appetite. They know this is that opportunity to seize a moment and become something in MMA. And we just saw a few fighters, most recently, Tino Hilarans do it. And, and the stories to tell, this man was in search for his first Combate Global victory. Third time's a charm. He got it here tonight, defeating a game fighter in Chris Boasa, who trains with the likes of Sanford MMA. I'm sure that Tino's camp right now is walking around watching this in Spain with their chest out because they just took out a man who trains with a very, very reputable camp in Sanford MMA with the likes of Henry Hooft. All right, I mean, at this point, at one point, you had the Kamaru Usman training at this camp. Yep. You know what it is for this man from Spain to walk into his own gym and said, I just represented you guys, the States, on Global TV. Remarkable stuff, and uh, clearly the training has paid off. That doesn't happen by accident. No. I, we, we saw, I called his fights back in 2019. It was a work in progress. That is a well-oiled machine that we just saw. Oh, we had so much happening here today. <laughs> Gabriel Soto, you know him? A, maybe the biggest Spanish language actor in the world, people in Mexico and Televisa and Univision, he was inside the Howla. He had some news to report. He joined us in the pre-fight show, looking very comfortable in the Howla. Maybe he'll be coming back to the Howla. You know what I like about this man? First thing is a matter of respect. Right before it's stepping into the Howla, he bowed down. That's how much he knows he respects that cage and he knows what takes place inside the Howla. As I said, it's holy ground. I always, I'm reluctant to walk in there when I'm, I'm here and we're doing some PR stuff, I just, I walk in there, I go, I'm not supposed to be here. You have to earn that spot. So some people get in there, but they're very respectful. And Gabriel Soto, who has one of his, his big shows wrapping up here on Televisa and Univision, has got a new one starting. And he likes to fight. If you follow him on social media, he's sparring. It's very important. And he signing the documents, Rodolfo. He will Sign and be seal. fighting. Who, who's going to step up to the plate? September 24th is who's the date. Who's going to step up? They join us in the pre-fight, and Campbell mentioned Mario Lopez. So, Mario, if, you want that? You want that smoke, Mario? I want to see it. <laughs> that would be amazing. So, we're new fights. You know, celebrity fights uh, are uh, people have a huge appetite for that. This would be a massive event, and Gabriel Soto soaking it all in. Why wouldn't he? This is well, what he's been dreaming of. He he's a great actor. He's a singer, but he loves fighting. And is, and I, I looked at Soto. He's he's a game dude. And I'll tell you this much, he won't leave Mario Lopez to be saved by the bell because he's going to go oh ahead and finish God. this. But I had to. I had to. I had no, to. No, you didn't. <laughs> I had to, Max. I'm just, I'm just upset I didn't think of it first. It may not be Mario Lopez. We are on the lookout. So uh, reach, us, reach out to us on social media. Maybe there's an athlete that wants to get in there. Maybe a singer, an actor wants to get inside the Howla. If it's you, we if you're seen, here on Paramount Plus or watching on the Worldwide, give us a holler. We have seen that transition from athletes, from football stars. Frank Gore just knocked out one of an opponent in boxes. Literally just laid this guy face plant on the floor. And we don't have to go any far. The YouTubers, right? We got the Paul brothers who have been killing it in the game of boxing, taking on MMA veterans, putting on a show. And even actors, they made that transition. But Soto is a guy that's been training for some time. This is not some some marketing scheme. No, this guy has been putting in the work. He's been in the gym. He's shown us just a little bit of the clips on the on the socials, but this guy has put in the work. So much respect to him. He's and, not just a face. And look, if he's, if it is Mario Lopez, and we're not saying it is, but Mario Lopez is in a gym all the time right. with jujitsu right. and boxing. Sure. He's, a, he's, a, he's a proper athlete in his own right. You don't want to get in there against a guy like that. You don't want to get in there against a guy who is fighting with regularity unless you know you can handle it uh, because you could be humiliated in there right. or you could be hurt. That's nothing Gabriel Soto wants right now. This guy is on cloud nine in his career. Uh, a bad showing, it, that changes. It's that simple. We'll be ready. Much more. We're getting towards our co-main and our main event here on Combate Global. As we get ready for the co-main event between J.J.
Here we go. It's time now for some more action. And Jay Joran is a huge prospect. This will be at 110. Marina Pichel looking to build on the Spanish success by Tino Gilarantz. That is coming up next in a catch weight. Cobain, let's get to know these fighters. First, Jay Joran. I started kickboxing when I was nine. I did the national championship, and then I was in the national team. I, I was winning everything, and I went to Ireland, and I started MMA there. I wanted to try, and I liked it. I'm only doing MMA. My dad is my coach. My dad is always very hard with me about what I do, and so my kickboxing is from my dad. He teach me everything. I can define myself as a striker because my background is kickboxing. I'm very happy to represent France in Combate. There is not a lot of French fighters and so I'm very proud to be one of them. I'm going to win this fight. My coaches and my family believe in me so I'm not going to disappoint them. Jade Joran from Bordeaux. She said it's a small town. It really isn't. A city of France known for great wines sure. and perhaps some fighting. Remember, MMA just became legal recently in France, so we're seeing this first real generation come through that have they trained before, but now they can actually call themselves mixed martial artists, and that's important. And we've seen some great fighters coming out of there. Czech Congo is one of the top of my head, the heavyweight division. And you're right, it just recently became legal, but listen, these men and women have been training since, and this is their shot now. It's legal. Let's get some events going on, and now let's expand what we are made of as the French. And this young lady here is an opportunity to get that first victory inside La Jaula here tonight. Her opponent, Marina Pichel from Barcelona. Primero empecé con K1, luego con Muay Thai. Luego fui añadiendo cosas todo el rato y empecé porque veía mucho a UFC y, y dije yo quiero hacer eso. Me hace mucha ilusión representar a España porque es el país donde he nacido y me siento muy orgullosa de ser española. Como mi familia nadie ha peleado nunca, siempre tienen miedo de que me puedan hacer un poco más de daño, pero ellos me, me respetan siempre. Soy una luchadora que no tiene miedo a los retos, todo lo contrario. Intento enfrentarme siempre con, con los mejores. Me defino técnicamente como una persona striker y me amoldo a bastantes disciplinas. Ahora puedo pelear en Muay Thai, en kickboxing, K1, MMA. Va a ser una pelea interesante, seguro. This is the professional debut for Marina Pichel who uh, has only been training for a couple years, a brief amateur spell, and now she feels she is ready for this. This is a great opportunity, and one that these women will come out with inspiration and a victory that can set the foundation for bigger, better things. We just don't know, because the best part about the women's divisions in, in combate, it's starting from the ground up. And they've always delivered, which is the good part about it. Especially these two, you know, the styles make fights. They're both very similar in their style of fighting. They both have that K1, that kickboxing, Muay Thai background. Expect right from the start to just throw everything that you can for both these ladies. Very curious to see the outcome of it. Should be a fun one, folks. That's what's so exciting. We know our combate audience loves to see the women fights, and there's so much at stake here between Gerard and Marina Sanchez Pichel, both just getting started. 21-22, four inch reach advantage for Jade. Let's go to Lupe. Este es el duelo coestelar de esta noche. This is our co-featured bout of the evening. Three rounds at a catch weight of 110 pounds. Tres vueltas a un peso pactado a 110 libras. Los jueces son, the judges are, Eliseo Rodriguez, John Rupert y Vicente Rodriguez. Y ahora, Damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, 
vestida de blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing white. Su peso oficial, 109 libras y tres cuartos, or official weight, 109 and three quarter pounds. Esta noche, entra a la jaula en busca de su primer victoria profesional con récord de dos derrotas. Tonight, she enters la jaula in search of her first pro victory with a record of two losses. De Bordeaux, Francia, Jade, the princess, Jaron. En la esquina roja, vestida de negro, in the red corner, wearing black. Su peso oficial, 108 libras. Her official weight, 108 pounds. Esta noche, se lanza las grandes ligas de las artes marciales mixtas. Debutando en la jaula de combate global. Tonight, she makes the leap into the big leagues of MMA. Inside of la jaula de Barcelona, España. Marina Pichel. El referee, Raúl Porrata. Raúl Porrata, the third inside the jaula. I love that mean mug and face from Marina to Jade. Jade wasn't having Ready? any of it, Max. Lista, acción. The air of the unexpected coming into this fight, which is so compelling, is Gerard in white. Seen her before here. She fought in Bellator in October of 2020. And in September of last year here, lost. We're gonna pick things up. Apparently put in all the work. Everyone you talk to in her camp and certainly that are close to this promotion say she is taking those steps. But does that translate once you're inside the jaula? Uh, the difference between these two ladies, although very similar in styles with a kickboxing background is Marina does have a very fast moving footwork. She'll go to the right, to the left, inside. Jade is a more fighter that will come right at you. Front forward into the right cross there. Made a little impact to Marina. Marina training at Arias Arena in Spain. A very reputable camp out there in Europe. As Jade looking in here to trade and exchange the sidekick from Marina. As Rodolfo was touching on as a striker, Gerard is elite kickboxing world champ, European Muay Thai champ, national team Muay Thai member in France. Great footwork, you can see she's got bounce there and she is ready to strike at any moment as they switch in stances here from Pichel. Very different but very similar st fighting styles, it's just the way that they carry it. Marina, the more flashier of the two with that stance. She kind of has that unorthodox stance. Oh, it's attempted a spinning back fist or elbow, did not connect. Jade chasing the prey. Trying to see where she can land and strike. Oh, good one there. Joran comes in with the right hand. It's funny to think, Max, when you see these type of fighters when they have that background in the kickboxing or Muay Thai, and we, we, we think about kickboxing, okay, but in each country, in each area of the world, they develop it in a different way. You know, the stance, the, the foot movement is so different, and really it's up to the fighter to see how they use it towards their advantage. Both fighters with very fast hands. Neither has been able to connect, but it might just be a matter of time as we reach the halfway point of the opening oh. round. Combination, Pichel. Response by Joran with the right hand. In pursuit. And see, and see Big how, overhand right misses. See how Marina is the one that's bringing in Jade, while Jade is the one that's chasing Marina. It's like a cat and mouse type of a fight. Good kick to the ribs there Stop. by Fischel oh, and time. low blow. Oh, she's got to hurt. You got five minutes. She's in a lot of pain. Oh, she is. Was that uh, the point or yep? The, or yeah, point. yeah, yeah, oh. yes, that, that, that hurts. You know, hurts for everybody. Pain, but it hurts for everyone, no matter what you are. But her reaction showed you how uncomfortable that was. And that was a hard kick by Jaron, and I think yeah, Michelle she, had her momentum yeah, coming in. Oh, oh, right, right underneath. Kick. Yeah, she tried to go for that. Then she caught that inside kick where she wanted to connect. But she caught it before no hitting her in the groin area. No, 
durante el fall no se habla. And it was a quick response from Marina. Still down. And her, the look on her face suggests that maybe she may not be able to continue. She'll, she'll be able to recover. She has five minutes. She just has to kind of pace herself. How about Duran just breathing. staying active on her feet? Well, you have to. You have to. You have to keep that that blood flowing, that adrenaline up. I don't know if she's going to continue. I mean, what? Well, she's moving around. She just have to. Be, she does have those five. Five minutes is a long time, Max. That's a full round. That's enough for you to recover. I, I, it goes a, a couple of fights back. Can remember? I think it was um, from Aruba, the man that got kicked in the groin area. He was out, but he had. I remember. Yeah, he had a lot She's of. He's gonna uh, go, but if something gets something gets hit, something gets Gene. injured. Gene. Gene Mark. Gene. No, Gene. Wait more. Wait more. Look it up right now, I'm glad your memory is as shoddy <laughs> as mine, Rodolfo. <laughs> I don't know. She's really, she said yes, but you don't fake that. That is legit agony. Jean Mark Howe. Jean Mark Howe. Jean Mark Howe. Jean. Thank you. Merci. You got to learn from Lupe, yes. who can really deliver the French pronunciation. I'll get on my Rosetta Stone to perfect those things. Okay, time in. Ready? Ready? Action! Back to it. Let's see how Vichel responds to that. Jolande was just bouncing on her toes that whole time while Vichel was recovering. You know, Mar Marina's stance just almost reminds me just a tad bit of Conor McGregor. You see how she she extends that that the left yeah. arm moves around. Unorthodox, for very sure. Unorthodox. Flash. See how, how she puts her chin out so she could bring in Jay to hit me. It's interesting you should say that because Joran was actually in, in Dublin yeah. and trained at SBG. But oh, you can see the nice influence man. Conor McGregor has on so many fighters. And MP Shell, uh, something's changed. She's engaged and uh, egging on Joran here with a minute to go in this first round. A very long round which had a lengthy stoppage. She's calling her in. Now, Jade, Jade needs to come push to put the pressure on her. That's what's going to stop her, stop wow. Marina from moving around. Great pivot kick there by Fichel, even though it missed. I think it was a, a message to Jaran about the range that she has. Now, don't be surprised, Max. Jay did say that she's been working on that oh, ground she... game. Oh, oh nice two good right hands. Fichel stopped. She had to shift uh, where she was hit earlier. So that's still bothering her. She attempted a Superman punch that was nowhere. I, I can't she's still grabbing. Yeah, she's she, grabbing she's, that groin she's area. In pain. There's yeah, something yeah. that's not right there, whether it's pain, whether it's discomfort. She's not recovered from it. Jade connected with another right hook to Marina. I mean, just to say, whether you're a man or a woman, it's a very delicate, fragile part of your body. You can't mess around with it. You take a hit square like that Ooh. and reach the end of the first round. Yeah, she's still grabbing on. Yeah. yeah, it's bothering her. I don't think it's going to go away anytime. She goes to her knees. So we'll keep tabs on this because she may not be able to continue. Jay Joran, the princess. La princesa. Marina Pichel was uh, unbeaten in her amateur career. We had a brief one. Making the quick adjustment. Plays like a combate global, which is giving out opportunities. I just love that she's able to compose and talk to her coach because Max, when you're in between rounds, it's so hard to compose yourself. <laughs> We're back. We're going to show the big moment and Pichel grabbing her groin area after being hit. There was a flush right hand and then a glancing one from Joran. Yeah, Joran at least landed a good three right hooks that were clean to Marina. And what the coach was saying from Marina's corner is, hit her with that right. 
Now, why is that? Well, because you're going to stop her from coming in with those hooks. And Jada's caught on to her. She understands that Marina keeps switching those stance. And that's the way to cut her off, the flipping around from the left to the right stance. And, and Pressure her in. A first round that was very difficult to call because you had the stoppage before Joran was the better fighter. Ooh. Afterwards, Michelle seemed to be. So I'm intrigued to see what the uh, the judges come up with. And remember, we have open scoring here in Combate Global. Jade's cross, though, just keeps coming in. Keeps coming right in. Michelle continues to change stances. Joran gets two of the three judges. I knew it would be close, Ooh, and it okay. was. A very close call. Which is great for Pichel, who now unloads with a combination. Do you see it better when she goes left, right? It seems she's better with the right hand. Yeah, it is because it throws Jade off. And then the side kicks here. This is good for Pichel. She's showing she has a lot in her uh, arsenal. Yeah, she's a very flashy fighter, especially in the amateur levels when she took on some really top-notch talent. Sharp punches and, from both fighters. And, and, and I'm surprised that none of them have attempted even a take, some sort of a takedown. Especially Marina Fichel, who in her previous, oh! Again, Jay just keeps connecting with that cross, that hook, the right hand, beautiful. Right kick coming off of Jade. Marina again attempting a spinning back fist, not connecting. A lot of feint just throwing in there, one, two combo. Durant's trying to push on is. the momentum, but Pichel is doing a really nice job counter punching. Yeah, Jade was pressuring into La Haula. That's exactly where he wants. She wants to put the pressure in to stop Pichel's movement. Oh, good punch by Pichel downstairs into the body. Still bothered by yeah, that. Still grabbing groin onto board. that groin. Who knows what that is if it's. She if there's a protective guard that's not sitting right, but it's it's really bothering her. And it's an unfortunate development here in what's looking to be a really well Beautiful. matched up fight. You know what I love about Jade's right hook is that, that turn, and you'll see it. As soon as she lands that right hook, she'll turn that just to land just right straight through knuckles. A little question mark kick as Bichelle, every strike comes with some discomfort. Joran may have to take advantage of it. It is plain to see. A little some elbow shoulder march. Shoulder, yep. Joran in close quarters, first time we've really seen her like this. Let's be careful. First time we've seen some clinch work, right? Yeah, we have not seen any of it. It's just been straight stand up kickbox oh what an elbow from jade in and out not wasting any time the opportunity was there she'll take it great stop, stop from both stop. these ladies very fast time what, what? she hit right here another oh. moment i saw it you did she say no. I would like to see the replay. I, one, I, point I, were in the clinch, one, one point off. One point off. Porata, Raul Porata, El Bigote off. taking off a point from Jade Duran. I, I, I want to. That's a huge point. I don't know if it was a knee. I mean, dude, if it was in the clinch. It's been a strange fight. She, she should have. Yeah, she has the five minutes. Maybe okay. we put a. Time in. Second ready, time tonight, ready, Raul Porata fight. has taken a point away from a fighter. Did he offer the five minutes? No, she said she was all ready to go. She asked her. He asked her. She said, okay. Big kick. Last time there was a stoppage, Bichel got shot out of a cannon right away. Woo! Sharon, short right hand delivers. Minute to go oh, in the second there round. It is. Here we go. And Jane understands. I've been deducted a point. I got to shoot. I got to go for the knockout. I got to finish this fast. I'm already, that, that point deduction there is a major thing. We yeah. saw oh! Left your end. Bichel felt it. She wants out of there. Oh. You speak about fast. These two ladies are fast lightning fast. Pace, fast pace. That's what you get when you get two women or men that are well versed in kickboxing and Muay Thai. It's just non-stop competition. 
peppering the jab. Jab hasn't really been shown off by Joran. She has to get it involved here. 20 seconds to go. Round number two. Jade using a lot of the feint now, trying to throw Marina off. Look, notice that Marina's foot movement has calmed down, not moving as quickly as she was prior. We're going to go to a third round. The question is, how do we score round number two? With the point deduction, Rodolfo, it's going to be a hodgepodge of a score. Because remember, the first round, with our official scoring here, Joran had two of the three judges with the 10-9. It's going to look different here in round two. And if Pichel won that round, she's going to have a little bit of daylight, at least yep. with one judge. Yep, this third round is definitely going to be interesting for both of these women. And let's, let's see if we can take a look and listen to the corner of Marina. Keep hitting him with the right. Keep going with the right and hit with the right. Here we go. Here's the clinch work. Let's see. Corners out. Afuera la esquina. Raul Perrata closes. Says she got hit. Oh yes, yes, yes. Ah. Oh. Good eye from Raul Perrata. It was clearly a nasty to the growing area. After what happened in the first round, uh, there is no margin for error. And Joran has to be careful. She wasn't. She's going to pay a heavy price. Now we await the official scoring. Whatever it looks like, Joran has to really go for it. The same could be said for Pichel. But with a point deduction, one judge, it's going to be a way for Joran to too far to catch up, I would imagine. Now grabbing the nose, Michelle rocked a little bit. This is such a close fight. Hats off to the matchmakers. Tony Badia and company who have done really well to make sure there's good matchups. They nailed it on this one. Gerard overhead kick. And to find these gyms, Spain, France, that are just coming up in the world of mixed martial arts. I mean, these guys got some good magnifying glasses <laughs> because, boy, they know how to find them. Almost another low blow, by the way, which would have been a death knell for Joran. Could be a DQ if he keeps going, you know? And this has been fast-paced, great interchange, exchanges from both these women. Jade continuing. Finding the opportunity, she's had a lot of success with that right hand. Right there, right on yeah. cue. She's been a lot, a lot of action with that. She's been nailing her. Good That's why Marina's reach. corner keeps telling her to hit that right. Let's look at the scores here, Max. Uh, so Duran had seemingly won by the skin of their teeth. I don't think that reflects the point deduction. We'll have to, we'll ah, have to confirm yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> So it could be, you may want to take a point off of that from Joran, which makes Don't it a real fence. tight uh, court. Marina grabbing to the fence. Don't the grab the fence! Yeah, she, she's Don't clearly grab the just center. grabbing it on there. Clearly. The clinch, remember right. Joran, who has had uh, 80 is, kickboxing Muay Thai amateur fights in the Muay Thai realm. This is uh, an area of expertise for her. This is a good opportunity, Max, for Jade to change the levels, switch it up and go for the legs and take down Marina. Or even for Marina, she could take here a throw, and side throw. Right there, she would have positioned her hip oh, elbows. to throw her up. Everyone coming down with those elbows. And look at the uh, look at the, the fingers of, of Jade on Marina. She has to be cautious. She could get right the eyes there. In and out. Which again. So much in the balance. There's our knee opportunities for Jade right here. Especially in that right quad area of Marina. The right hand has been a power yeah. punch all fight. All day. It's been there all day, Max. Fast paced action from both these women. It's a European battle. Oh! And this is the beginning. I get the feeling, Rodolfo, in the years ahead, we're going to see a lot of France versus Spain. And it's going to be for championships. It's going to be main events. These two countries are growing by leaps and bounds. We saw it with Timo Hilanats. Just knowing these countries, knowing 
And the, the Irish, makeup. too. The Irish, too, but Spain and France, yeah, Spain they, and when France. it comes to sports, they are the best. Whatever it might be, soccer, basketball, yeah. tennis. Yeah. How many Spaniards and French have we seen in the NBA? The NBA, yeah. these are countries that take their sports seriously, and they like to fight. If you go to history, I mean, it's there, right? <laughs> it is. We don't have to go into the details, but... It, it, it's undeniable. Sports are taken so seriously in those two countries that it would be impossible, especially if there's a lucrative uh, end-all for great Spanish, French fighters to develop. It's going to happen. It's going to happen before your eyes. And here on Combate Global, you're seeing it first. Just go back to December, Copa Combate. We had a Frenchman, we had Spaniards, we had Irishmen that competed. In fact, the, 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 the finals of Poco Pocabate was a Spaniard versus an Irishman. Malambo and Cordero. We look forward to seeing both those gentlemen again inside the Jaula. 30 seconds to go. 30 seconds to possibly win this fight. Big knee. Two knees. Oh, Sharad drops Michelle. She gets a third Malby and Guillotine. Oh, it's in. It's in. She has to pop up her hips to really quite Looks to really put pressure in it, Max. 15 seconds, gotta get that arm. But yeah, that, she didn't those, have that tight. But those two knees may have swung things in her favor. It was yeah. the biggest power strike in this third round. No head positioning from Pichel. Fantastic yeah. action. And Pichel drops the agony that she had to deal with from the first round. Hope she's okay, just don't know. We'll get the official decision next. And Sharana, she Sheldon wants none of it. She's in pain and she wants some privacy. How beautiful it is for Jade celebrating alongside her dad. Terry jo Joran, who said, you know, she said, I, I learned my kickboxing thanks to my dad. It's such a beautiful story. I can uh, attest to that. I have a daughter myself. I'm already showing her a couple of moves. <laughs> it's a beautiful Smart thing, man. man. Beautiful thing. It really sure, truly is. To see young women make it into sport, man, just gives me chills. You know, it's a beautiful thing. It, you know, it's, uh, it's great to see these women to bring their pure athleticism and skill and show what they're all about. As we see the replay here, great knee to the midsection that brought down the Spaniard. Let's take a look here from the referee camp. Beautifully executed. It's a knee. Oh, Lord. Straight to the floor. Jay Joran, great work. Of course. She had that point deducted due to the incidental shot to the groin area. But it seems to be the way, and again, it all depends on the judges, but it seems like Jade will get her first victory inside La Jaula. Max, the Hef is inside. You know what that means. Uh, he enjoyed it. I know we did as well. Great stuff. And great debut for Marina. We can't take anything away from her. She came in, showed her athleticism. We don't know how much of an impact had on that groin shot, had a, 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 on Marina as far as movement. You can see she's kind of bending her back. This is gonna be razor thin in the judges. Let's get the official decision to Lupe Contreras, co-main event. Both fighters feeling confident. Raul Porata, which arm will he raise to Lupe? Damas y caballeros, después de tres vueltas, el juez Vicente Rodriguez anotó 28 a 28, un empate after three rounds. Judge Vicente Rodriguez scores it 28 to 28, a draw. That's the point Superado right there, por huh? los jueces Eliseo Rodriguez y John Rupert, que entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 27. Overruled by judges Eliseo Rodriguez and John Rupert that turn in identical scores of 29 to 27.
in favor of the winner by way of majority decision a favor de la vencedora por decisión mayoritaria the princess J. Jerome oh, you know that heart drop there. you know that heart dropped a little bit <laughs> that's a point deduction is just seismic in this but she overcame it and after a disappointing start to her MMA career, a sweet victory, which she feels could maybe change their trajectory. I know Campbell has big plans for Jade. What's not to like? She's an absolute delight. <laughs> She's more than a pretty face, Max. She can bring inside La Haula, go toe to toe with any opponent. It's been an amazing night, but we're not done. We're not done. Main event time, Arturo Macaco Vergara. Taking on the champ at 135, David, the Black Spartan, Martinez. This is going to be good. Don't go anywhere. Combate Global on Paramount Plus, plus a worldwide audience tuning in. Campbell urging on the ghost. Yo empecé con, con karate, mis papás son maestros de karate, entonces desde pequeños nos, nos inculcaron este arte marcial. El kickboxing lo hemos hecho a partir de los 12 años. Después del kickboxing nos pasamos a las artes marciales. Yo peleo por mi equipo que es Bone Breaker, mi país que es México y mi familia que son todos los que me acompañan. Y aparte de pelear, estoy terminando la carrera de medicina, ya nada me falta el, el servicio social pero todavía no, no este, laboro como médico. The Black Spartan. Yo soy un peleador que me gusta entrar a la jaula, me divierte mucho. Yo creo que soy el peleador de estilo mexicano. Martínez. Entreno muy fuerte para pegar más duro, para tener una lucha más dura, para tener unas mejores técnicas, para, para ser mejor. Pienso en mis peleas, me gusta de pensar qué voy a hacer antes de, de subir a la jaula. Me siento increíblemente fuerte, me siento increíblemente preparado y todo esto ha sido gracias a, a esta motivación que me dio a ganar el título. Puro DF, The Black Spartan. Now the main event, it was supposed to be Franz Lombo. He withdrew due to injury. They found an opponent, a real good one, Arturo Vergara, as he will face the Bantamweight champion, David the Black Spartan Martinez. The title will not be on the line. Let's meet the Chileno. Hace muchos años, nueve años, empecé con un grupo de amigos. Mi mente cambió. Cuando empecé a entrenar MMA y, y me dije, en verdad, yo creo que puedo hacer lo que yo quiera. Lo que hace que los peleadores de mi país se destaquen es que sabemos que venimos de abajo, entonces generalmente siempre son peleadores todo aguerridos y yo no he visto ningún chileno en verdad que, que en ningún espectáculo no dé una guerra. Más que representar a Chile como en sí, en verdad representa a toda esa gente que viene de los barrios bajos y demostrarle que en verdad que si tú quieres hacer algo, que puedes hacerlo. Lo que me caracteriza como peleador, en verdad, es esto. Tengo la capacidad de, de adaptarme a lo que sea. Estoy más que preparado, en verdad. Siempre he soñado, así como, algún día van a llamar y tengo que estar listo, porque la vocación es perfecta, no existe. 
que esté listo en verdad, que viene su peor pesadilla en camino. Cry for fighters from Chile, and certainly Arturo Vergara said it. When uh, you are a Chilean fighter, they always use the expression los de abajo, those from below. Bottom, which yeah. you look at Chile, it's the, the bottom of the globe. It's the south-south of our planet. And there is a, a lot of pride about that because it's always going up. And that's where Arturo Vergara wants to go. He got the call just days ago. He was not supposed to walk in here. He was supposed to be Francis Lambo going up against David Martinez for his title. However, Arturo understand what this chance is for him to put Chile on the map. We've seen a lot of Chileans coming in here, making headlines. He just came off a fresh victory, ninth second flying knee. Can he do that? I don't know, we're about to find out. He has a tough task in front of him. One of the elite fighters in Combate Global, David Martinez. Yo empecé con, con karate. Mis papás son maestros de karate, entonces desde pequeños nos nos inculcaron este arte marcial. El kickboxing lo hemos hecho a partir de los 12 años. Después del kickboxing, nos pasamos a las artes marciales mixtas. Yo peleo por mi equipo, que es Bone Breaker, mi país, que es México, y mi familia, que son todos los que me acompañan. Eh, aparte de pelear, eh, estoy terminando la carrera de medicina. Ya nada me falta el, el servicio social, pero todavía no, no este, laboro como médico. The Black Spartan. Yo soy un peleador que me gusta entrar a la jaula, me divierte mucho. Yo creo que soy el peleador de estilo mexicano. Martínez. Pero no muy fuerte para pegar más duro, para tener una lucha más dura, para tener unas mejores técnicas, para, para ser mejor. Pienso en mis peleas, me gusta de pensar qué voy a hacer antes de, de subir a la jaula. Me siento increíblemente fuerte, me siento increíblemente preparado. Y todo esto ha sido gracias a, a esta motivación que me dio a ganar el título. Puro DF, The Black Spartan. David Martinez, from an incredible fighting family, said about his, his parents teaching karate, his sister, Super Melly, an elite fighter here with Combate as well. Six wins in seven, bantamweight champion. All of it's great, he looks locked in. One problem, have not seen him in a year when he won the tournament where he was as impressive as we've ever seen. He had an injury and then also he actually had a conversation with him on Instagram prior to the launch of this year's season. And he said, I wanted to be a part of Copa Combate, but you know what, my professor said, I needed to focus on my studies before I enter La Hala. Jesus. So good for him, he put his studies first and then fighting for now. Studying to be a doctor, he said he had his residency. He said the toughest part is behind him now. He looks for the social service part where he can become a full doctor. He's very close. And at the tender age of 23, this is a remarkable human being. And even more so when you see him in the howl, like he is electrifying. Could Arturo Vergara stem the tie? Two inch height advantage. He has one inch height disadvantage. We are in the band of weight division. Este is. El duelo estelar de esta noche, this is the main event. Three rounds in the Bantamweight division, tres vueltas división peso gallo. Los jueces son Lorenzo Toledo, Eliseo Rodriguez y John Rupert. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, introducing the blue corner. Vestido de azul con blanco, wearing blue with white. Marcó un peso oficial de 136 libras y un cuarto. He registered an official weight of 136 and one quarter pounds. Con un récord combinado de cinco victorias y solo una derrota. With a combined combat sports record of five victories against one lone defeat. De Los Andes, Chile. And fighting out of Miami, Florida. Arturo. Macaco Vergara. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestido del tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo, is upon in the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white and red. Un peso oficial 
de 135 libras y un cuarto with an official weight of 135 and one quarter pounds. Entra por octava ocasión a la jaula con seis victorias y una derrota. He enters la jaula for the eight times a pro with a record of six victories against one defeat. El campeón reinante peso gallo de combate global. He is the reigning combate global bantamweight champion de Catepec, Estado de México. The Black Spartan, David Martinez. El referee, Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers and his chops. Third inside the howler. Main event time. Guys, listen, we went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. If not, listen to me at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Do everything you can within the rules to win. Most importantly, best of luck. God bless. Go back. Push for the belt. Martinez didn't even look at Vergara in the face. He did not look eye to eye. He shit to the side. But Martinez is hype, man. He's furious. He wants to shut Vergara up. Ready? And wants to finish this fight very quickly. And you have to think and of this, he can. Max. You have to think of this, Max. Martinez is not is going into Vergara's territory. You just heard the fans inside the studio. They're all for Vergara. Yeah, there was booze for Martinez. As, as much of a home field advantage as you could have. He's with the Goat Shed Academy. They are in his corner. He looks very sprite coming out. But Martinez has knockout power at any time. We saw it back in May of last year in the tournament where he beat Alejandro Gonzalez with the TKO. Alan Bechicantu, who we saw earlier this evening, and then UFC veteran Cisco Rivera with a now famous head kick that you will see at the beginning of our program where we roll out the opening credits. Different type of game, no flashiness from the start from Vergara. He understands the type of fighter wow. that Martinez is. He's flashy, there's no doubt. But Martinez is a very well more experienced as far as mixed martial arts. You notice there, Vergara has a combined record of combat sports of five and one. He's had 80 bounces as an amateur kickboxer. Beat Christian Barraza, who we know in K1. He had a ninth second victory back on May against Cody Skiebe. This guy can put you out, put the lights out very quickly. Vergara has yet to make it into the second round of a mixed martial arts competition. We should mention he came over 0.2 of a pound above 0.2, the limit. Which was a big deal. Which was a big deal to Martinez. Martinez, right. Well, rightfully so, right? If you sign up and it's professionalism, it happens. But Martinez took the fight. He is the... Oh, Black Spartan! Put him down with that straight right. Welcome, Vergara to the Jaula. First power strike. He's been sitting there kind of dealing with the kicks of Vergara and then the wake-up call. Man, what a beautiful right. Just ran right into it. And Again, he Martinez! He's in trouble, Out of the left! He's in he put him down! It's the done. Black Spartan has done oh, it again! Man. He's the best in the business at 135! We talked to Campbell, and he said, I don't know, he's a champ. He just proved it to you right there. Why? He's, he's a champ. He is a special fighter, senores y señoras. Vergara's Watch walking out. out of the howla. Walk straight one out, which goes to show you all that talk, all that smack means nothing when showtime comes. Look at Martinez walking very confident. He put all that social media talk to rest, knocking out his opponent. He went out of the frying pan with Malambo into the fire with Vergara, but it doesn't matter. He's still the man. Wow. Wow, wow. Uh, we, uh, we keep saying these cards are, are good, and I go, they're going to have a bad one. We're going to have a bad one. This may have been the best one we've had. When you think about what we just saw this man do with Dino Hilarance and the incredible Jane Duran performance, but this is... I mean, this is next level. Uh, Vergara doing the right thing, coming good out. And uh, I want to see, Vergara looked really sure, good sure, until sure. he didn't. Sure, I mean, it's not over for Vergara, right? I mean, he's still in his infancy in the mixed martial arts world. He still has much to prove to himself. But Martinez is just a solid fighter, and he proved it to you tonight. He's a star. We've seen enough. And a year between fights to be that sharp.
We are back. The official decision. David Martinez was asked about his nickname, the Black Spartan. He says, I gave it myself. I enjoy history of war. I enjoy strategy. I look for more info on the Spartans, who were the strongest of the bunch. I feel like I'm one of them. Certainly look like one tonight. El referee Josh Rutgers para la contienda con un tiempo oficial de dos minutos, ocho segundos del primer episodio. Referee Josh Rutgers stops this contest with an official time of two minutes, eight seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico, the Black Spartan, David Martinez. All good. I mean, it, it, you've got to have the gamesmanship, and you've got to fire yourself up. You've got to find an edge. And that's what these fighters do. And Martinez, we're so glad we saw him because this fight was in peril. There's no doubt about it when Franz and Lambo, we'd like to still see that fight. Maybe there's a Lambo uh, Vergara fight before they get a shot at Martinez. Well, this was not a title fight, by the way. Beautiful, just cross, cross from. Oh. A right hook from Martinez that shook oh. Vergara, and they just follow off flurry of punches, just finishing him off. Rucker had seen it enough, he stopped this fight. Vergara was just pulled on fast pace like a freight train. Couldn't stop this guy. He's the real deal. Martinez, as soon as I, walk, I saw him walk inside La Jaula, he was so confident. He did not look at Vergara's face. He knew he had a job to do, and that was to finish off this fight really quickly. He's a champion. He had to make a statement, and that's the statement that he needed to do. Finish off this opponent that was given to him, that had knocked out and defeated two opponents previously very quickly. Well, he just put a dent on Vergara's career right here. He knocks people out. Another first round at TKO added to the list. He has seven knockouts out of seven wins. Talk amongst yourselves, decompress. As David Martinez, there's something about a fighter who you build up and you, you sell as a main event, and then he delivers in a way like that. That last right hand. I mean, those, those fists are legit weapons. I mean, he has been throwing punches his entire life. And if he catches you on the chin, that not many fighters want to get any of that smoke. But Gata did. Looked good for a minute or so, and then he succumbed. Great stuff. It just proves to you Martinez is the real deal. And I, I, I want to see that fight between him and Franz Malambo. It's going to be so much fun. Such an amazing division. We'll see it continue to grow. Back inside the Haula, it is a bow on an incredible day, night of fighting. You know, one thing that I that, that I saw very interesting is Campbell walked alongside Martinez to La Haula. He was just right behind him. Great stuff from Martinez. That the guy is just a solid dude, finishing off foes. And listen, his only loss was back in April hard to imagine last that. year. Hard and it was a imagine, split decision. But it's hard to imagine that happened. He and just it, wasn't on his game there. That's the only reason. Right. And literally to today, one year ago, is when he won the Bantamweight Championship in that tournament. He made up for it. Okay, I lost that split decision. Let me, let me prove to you what I'm worth. He got in the tournament and defeated some game opponents, knocking out Francisco who has been in the game. This is a, a veteran in the sport of mixed martial arts, knocking him out in highlight real fashion. Unbelievable stuff. And now we, we, we anticipate what is next. Hopefully not another year between fights. I'm certainly not gonna be it. This is gonna be David Martinez's year. He's gonna be a doctor and he is a champion here in combate. Looking back at an incredible evening, and uh, David Martinez still the bull of the woods, the man of the hour, standing atop 135 pounds, despite the fact that he had to take a, a, a change of a fighter. This was a highly anticipated matchup between Franz and Lambo. We so much respect for Arturo.
Vergara, who has come into this, and we hope to see him some more. He, yeah. He, I just think it's a case of you're fighting an elite, elite guy. He was fed to the wolves. I mean, let's face it, Martinez is that good. We saw it here tonight. You give me anyone, and I'll show you how good I am. Vergara, he's just in his infancy as a mixed martial artist. He has a long storied background in kickboxing. There's no doubt about that. In fact, he even defeated Chris Barraza, who's competed here several times in Combate Global. He defeated him in K1 Boxing. But great stuff. I'm sure we'll see Vergara very soon here in La Jaula as we go uh, take a look at some of the previous bouts that took place earlier on today, Max. Tino Hilarantz, maybe the most impressive, as impressive as David Martinez was, Tino Hilarantz may have been even more so. He trapped Chris Boasso, and then he hurt him bad. Right from the start, Tino, just, he saw a lot of footage. He saw footage from what occurred previous fight. Chris Boasso, who got caught in a guillotine choke. This time around, though, it was a different result as Tino ended up winning by a flurry of punches and elbows as he took a look take a look at the referee cam in this position Boasa just could not get away from this position he was trapped like a Venus fly trap trapping a fly he just could not get away from this position the Spaniard getting his first victory inside La Jaula of Combate Global right now this man is all smiles. And surely Spain as well. Super impressive performance by a fighter that had to really challenge himself. He took some, some shots, he went down, he took some losses, and now he gets the most impressive win of his very young MMA career. And we look forward to seeing him again in that featherweight division. Uh, like Bantamweight, it is stacked at 145 pounds. Right before that, it was an incredible knockout by Alan Beche Cantu in the first round over Pierre Daguzan. We had mucho más acción. That's the yeah. meat and potatoes yeah. of combate, correct? Fast pace, literally don't blink. As you take a look at the stats that took place uh, earlier on. Boasa never got off the never got off the the tarmac. Yeah, you know this is when you just have to look back, take a look at the book and see where you can make some fixes in your holes and in your gaps and straighten it out, fix it, work on it. At times you'll see some fighters that say, okay, I gotta, I gotta take some, some, some time away. I, maybe, you know, personal stuff gets in the way, gets in the way, so many obstacles. I'm sure Boasa will bounce back. Perfect 26 of 26 in striking for Hilarans and uh, they were all power punches and elbows. To our co-main event, Jay Gerard. Marina Pichel, this was uh, had some controversy as Pichel got hit in the groin and she was in pain. She got hit in the first round, she was in pain. Right there there yeah. it was for the entire fight. It was just like a field goal kick. She definitely felt that one throughout the bout. And then later on, she got hit again with a knee from Jade. In fact, that even caused her a point. Nonetheless, both these women were fast, quick on their feet, showing their talents as stand-up fighters with a kickboxing background. It's all about styles make fights, but that knee bringing down Marina the Spaniard to the floor at the end of the fight. Clearly, Jade here smelled victory. She followed through, and surely enough, Jade here gets that first victory inside La Jaula of Combate Global. Enjoy yourself a glass of wine. Jade. Oh, deserve it. a nice Bordeaux and maybe a <laughs> Beaujolais. That's your hometown, Bordeaux. We had a Daguzan from Versailles, so some very very famous French locations represented here in Combate Global. Is, uh, the stats of that fight, uh, this one went three hard rounds. It was super close, a point deduction for Gerard. She had to sweat it out. There was one judge who had it tied and then she had the edge 29-27 on the other two scorecards. Sanchez, it was just her professional debut, so I'm sure we'll see her very soon here inside Combate Global. Great footwork, great stance, very unorthodox, fun fighter to watch. And the main event, unforgettable, Arturo Vergara coming in. The crowd jeering David Martinez. Vergara with the early pressure, and then he didn't have it. <laughs> that was the first big right hand. And then the second time around, Martinez with a 
just a power snap combination, and it was over. When you talk a lot of smack, you gotta back it up, but it's not with your mouth, it's with your fists and your feet and your skills inside the howler. Martinez did not let that get to his head as he put a stop to Vergara very quickly in the first round with that beautiful right hook that took Ooh. down Vergara the first time around and they just followed up with a flurry of punches. Martinez, right from the get-go, he knew he had this fight won. He was focused, confident that he was gonna come out victorious tonight. He is such a uh, well-versed fighter. He can beat you so many ways. He looks like a great boxer. He'll finish you that way. We saw him beat Cisco Rivera with Nasty the kick. uppercuts too. Seven yeah. wins, seven knockouts. Has some submission game, but we haven't seen it yet because he's he doesn't, he doesn't let the fight you. get to that point. <laughs> really an elite talent, a superstar here, right at the top of the class at Combate Global, who could win anywhere. That's how good the Black Spartan is. We're going to hear from David Martinez. We heard from him earlier, uh, a lot on his plate. We'll see what he had to say after the fight. And we will uh, wrap things up here on a very special Sunday. What they call in the business. Muchas of gracias. Oh, me siento thank you very muy much. bien. Me I siento well. este, pues muy feliz ahorita de volver a pelear. Ya tenemos un poquito no peleaba year. para la empresa. Y aquí estamos de vuelta. Y here I am again. Vamos a seguirle dando muy fuerte. And I, uh, I'm going to keep I'm going hard. As we wait here, and we're translation on the spot, ladies and gentlemen, impromptu. <laughs> so <laughs> you put yourself over there, Rodolfo. Well, I, hey. <laughs> Good stuff. We don't know the questions. Well, we but don't know the questions, so we're translating on the spot here. So you could just bear with us. It's a long question. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Este, la verdad es que solo estaba siguiendo la estrategia. Estaba siguiendo las combinaciones que ya que ya habíamos practicado. Y eh, la verdad es muy bueno, muy bueno Arturo. He was, he was good. Vergara was very good. He was hitting me hard with the legs. Playing around with the distance, he did a good job. But on my end, I wanted to stick to the strategy and, and hit him. Pues, este, primeramente muchas gracias. Alright, thank you very much. Y pues ahorita seguir defendiendo mi cinturón. I want to defend my title. La categoría y aquí vamos a estar en la empresa. And I'm here. I'm here with 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 Combate Global, the promotion. Gracias. Thank you. Sí. Este, primeramente iba a pelear contra How much time did you train for Frank this fight was the question yeah, si I was going to fight for Frank Lambo hablando I was por, talking porque él había ganado la, la Copa had Combate Copa entonces Combate. ya tenía la verdad un, un rato preparándome I had some time eh, already en diciembre entonces desde ese training, entonces ya, ya este, estamos preparando pero so para I was esa training for that fight eh, posteriormente eh, Frank se lastima la costilla France me cambian el peleador was injured y, they este, changed the fight seguimos, and we still eh, kept training con la pelea y pues bueno aquí nos tienen and then I'm here <laughs> sí <laughs> Solo, pues que, que entres a, a, a disfrutar lo que haces que I, es I, I come lo, here to enjoy what I do. Importante. It's, it's the most important part about it. <laughs> claro, claro, la preparación, the, este, pues en todos los ámbitos, que física, the preparation, mental, physically, mentally. Eh, bueno, este es uno de this yo is, creo que el, el deporte más completo the, the, que conozco the, porque the, the, es the biggest complete sport of all y juntos y pues bueno tienes que estar because you have eh, to grab everything en together los, en todos los ámbitos in, in all areas you have to be well versed pues eh, esa pelea ya ya este ya la teníamos como the, como pactada Th this, this fight I already had a strategized, a thought of. My opponent, number one, is, is Franz Bambo, who won Copa Combate. He's a good fighter. He has a lot of arsenal. <laughs> Enjoy the moment. 
Probably talking to Pube Hablarado, no? Yeah, no, sure. 100%. Sí, un, un compatriota, un compatriota mío. Uh, a compatriot, but ah, sure excelente peleador el Pube, la verdad es lo que... Oh, hey, he's he's I knew it, I told you. All right, right. Pube, who's on the Spanish, Spanish Trying to put himself over el Pube. Está entrenando con muy buenos peleadores. I've been entonces, training here este, with, with well fighters, fighters, good fighters. Good fighters. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> sí, exactamente. Muchas gracias, un abrazo y Thank you, hugs. gracias por, por estar aquí en, en... Thank you for allowing me to come here. <laughs> gracias. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Muchas I gotta gracias. give him props. He fight with braces on, man. I know. There's a you lot know, going on with this guy. Those are expensive to break those things. He, he, he's just, <laughs> it's just a, a guy who goes to the beat of a different drummer, so different in every way. Remember, he uh, he was getting ready for a fight, fractured his hand, so he's had some setbacks. Didn't look like a fighter that uh, was rusty. Didn't look like a fighter who was coming off an injury. Didn't look like a fighter that had to adjust to a new opponent. And he's fresh. You give this guy a fight next week, he'll probably be ready to go. He didn't have a dent on his face. No. Not, not even a scratch. Superb talent. Thrilled to have him here at Combate Global and excited to see what comes next for him. We'll have to wait a little bit, but that's certainly in the works. We know the public will want to see him. We do have some fights coming your way over the next two Fridays. And uh, let's talk about it. next Friday. Ooh, I like this main event. I know, because one, Is it can put, one can Nicaragüense it? to another. Nica. Chimi Morales. Chimi Morales. Nicaragua, of course, Had home. a great fight against Froggy Estrada. Yep. That, him a little short. Great stuff here. He knocked him down a few times. Great fight from Jimmy. And uh, I'll tell you from Nikos, man, we love boxing. Lexis Arguello, one of the well-known boxers. And then Marlon and then Gonzalez, the Peruvian, who was uh, really coming along in 2019. We haven't seen him during the pandemic, but he's back. And he'll be on the main event. Zellner versus Piscata. Ida Kahneman. Gloria Bravo, that's oh, a huge I'm fight. I'm looking forward the to women. Bravo and Cunningham. You know, Bravo has just well versed as a fighter. She's come along, very experienced. Her stand up game is on point. Uh, she actually just trained uh, gyms. Uh, she switched gyms out to uh, Barrio Franklin, uh, where she feels more confident. And Yahida Cunningham, she too has changed camps. She was formerly with the MMA Masters, and she said, You know, I, I was getting too comfortable. I, I was sparring with the same people. They kind of knew my mistakes. So I wanted to change up the game here and I, I created my own system. So she's training in different camps, training with different peoples. And that's a way to really expose what's wrong and right from her. You have to stay on your toes. You gotta reinvent yourself so that nothing catches you by surprise so that you can stay above your opponent. Those who rest don't succeed no long term. No sleep for the wicked. No, <laughs> you're turning some phrases. It's a lot of rock music, A man. lot of, That's no. cold. Wow, this guy. <laughs> this guy. Well, we got that next Friday. We'll have another card next Friday. And uh, you don't take your eyes off of this because everything comes at you fast. Just ask our, our good friend Arturo Macaco Vergara. I had, a lot, I had a lot about that fight I never got to because uh, it ended so quickly. But that's why we have to, you have to over-prepare. To all these folks out there who want to learn to be in this business, calling, calling sports, you got to over-prepare. You don't use it all, that's tough. We'll put the time in. There's the main event next Friday. Now versus the Peruvian. Jimmy Morales. Dedico 7 Marlon Gonzalez. Nicaragua contra Peru. You don't get that all the time. So no, soak no. it all in. It was a bloody mess. I'll bring something to his niches. <laughs> Dino Hilaran, it's not after seeing all that blood. I would have to pass. <laughs> Jay Duran gets a big victory. And the Black Spartan victorious in the main event. We are out of time. Hey, thanks for Gabriel Soto for signing the papers and joining yeah, us man. here. The man in charge, Art Izquierdo, Victor Bagué, of course, El Jefe, Campbell McLaren, Rodolfo Roman. My name is Max Pretos, and I can say it with conviction this time. Placido Domingo!